Okay, uh, done the mass removal here, top and bottom. Things are starting to kind of look like a stem. Uh, next step is to do the equivalent to the sides. Now you got to be careful, you don't want to taper this over its entire length. The, uh, the base of the stem actually goes the opposite direction, so be careful you don't fall into the trap of tapering that and then finding out you cut off the ends of the, or the edges that you, you need this material right here. And that's right out near the, <coughs> excuse me, notice that the white line that marks the outside of the end of the shank, well the uh, dimension here is slightly larger than where it touches the wood. So you're very, very nearly going to use the entire piece of rubber here within a millimeter or so. So if you were to measure off the width of the end of the blade and then run a straight line at an angle back to here, uh, you're in trouble. You, right there you've removed some important material that you're going to need. So think these things through in advance and uh, sketch them out. I put two pencil lines there for rough guides as well as on the end. And uh, so I'm going to go run over to the same machine I just got off of, grind the sides down, and uh, also begin to shrink this uh, control, uh, excuse me, control knob thing that we won't be needing much longer. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on when that's finished. Okay, back from the Burr King, uh, reduced the width somewhat, knocked the button down, shortened it just a little bit. There was probably another two millimeters there that was just extra to let me do that handle routine. So starting to shape up. Uh, the next order of business is, I guess, to explain what this chunk of broomstick is for. And it's exactly what you think. We're going to be uh, getting into all of this filing here. And that's some tedious business. If you, especially on a bent pipe, you mount something like this and you go after it with all of these rounded files and stuff, it's very difficult to do that and dodge the stumble in some, in, you know, depends on the angle and stuff, but it can be a, a chore and the last thing you want to do is take a gouge out of this. This pipe is in perfect condition and as I mentioned in the first installment in this, this is a expensive collectible here. You have to be careful of that kind of stuff. So holding it, pinching the stem in your, in your hand like this and trying to file naturally, that ain't going to work either. So you make a fake pipe, in a manner of speaking, that's nothing more than a piece of wooden dowel rod. Now you can get dowel at hardware stores, but typically it is oak and it's splintery. It's fairly expensive. It's a beast to work with. Uh, I've had much better luck getting replacement broom handles for, for like push brooms and stuff at a, a, a full spectrum hardware store, not a little bitty neighborhood one, but a kind of a thing that might have commercial accounts because those guys that, that have commercial custodial outfits don't use plastic tube brooms and stuff like that that they're selling to homeowners these days. They want old school stuff. So they sell replacement handles for mops and brooms and it's I don't know if it's basswood or what this stuff is, but it's a lot softer than oak, but it's plenty hard enough to do what you need to do. And you just drill a hole, uh, ream it, and because most of this stuff is standard, if you've got the full set of uh, fractionals and 
a metric and all that kind of stuff. You just find something in your rack of drills and, and reamers and you'll come up with the, the perfect fit for whatever the size tenon you've got is. And then you hold this thing like a microphone. You can put a lot of pressure on that. You can do whatever you want and you don't need to worry about damaging the stummel. As much as possible, we're going to avoid handling this or messing with Now, we won't be able to completely avoid it, but whenever we have the option, uh, when it's our choice, uh, always choose don't go there. Okay, and uh, a word here before I get to the next step is people uh, visit me from time to time almost always remark on the seeming overkill or uh, the why do I get so precise with rough operations if I'm gonna if I know that blades gonna be half that thick why do I bother with all of these straight lines and stuff in the meantime and it's partly I know I, I'm not good enough to do it on the fly but more to the point that applies to everyone is don't forget that if you're a pipe maker, whatever shape you want is okay by definition. Now, if you're making standards, uh, English standards, that's less true, but it still is somewhat true. But if you're making something like this, it's a creative shape. And most artisan pipes these days are creative shapes. Those guys just wing it. They might have an idea where they're headed, but as they work through and morph it, and they say, no, that needs a little more of this, a little less of that, or if they gouge something and they have to modify it to accommodate, well, anyway, they, it's much easier to hit the target when the target is large and blurry like that. In repair work where you're replacing stems and the name of the game is to make the new one look uh, exactly like the old one that's uh, it's very demanding and it's far easier in my experience if you in like imagine a, a some adjustment that has clicks in it and if you turn the screw and click just a little closer in every dimension and gradually shrink the thing to what you, you want as opposed to just jump in and start grinding away. You'll have 100% accuracy or 100% success with the exception of once in a while you'll find a uh, like Swiss cheese bubble in the rubber or something, but that's not your fault. But it's worth the slight extra time to do it the precise click at a time way when you don't ever screw up. And I can't remember the last time I had to abandon a replacement stem. I always get what I'm shooting for because I'm methodical in approaching it. So that's why this all looks like a, a domino. And I mean, every, it's kind of almost an art piece looking pipe stem, but no, we're not going to be anything close to that when we're done. So, uh, Next step of operation, or next step here is to keep the center line going. We still have our slot. We're going to cue off of that and run a thin tape line down each side, or you could even use a pencil line at this point. And then mark where we don't want to go no way, no how. In other words, there will be a zone between my fingertips here all the way around that for the present time we don't want to mess with and up to that point we can slope it we can get the, all the the scoopiness going like this and that's what we want to do now do not uh, be tempted to do the outside of this and then do the swoops that's not the way this is going to work uh, it there may be people who can do that but it's would it's just making work for yourself so leave the reduction of the saddle portion here uh, to the last. And we're going to now take our blade piece and do this kind of a deal here. We're gonna, 
and the tools to do that are whatever you happen to have on hand a good thing is are these round just plain old round hardware store files now i've got a lot of of uh higher end i'll call them uh uh, Swiss files for finish work, but if you're doing uh, uh, coarser work, hardware store files are fine, and these round ones are really good. And the uh, needing a lot of, let me think if I can reach them here. Well, I'll I'll cover it in the next deal. I can't reach them in with the f uh, camera here, but you need to make a bunch of sanding blocks of different shapes and tapers and curvatures and you keep once you've made them you keep them but you'll accumulate a cigar box full of those and then make a new one if you don't have something already but that's the best way to shape something so that it looks like something else uh, it, meaning it matches it's a duplicate which is the entire name of the game here so alrighty I'm gonna go uh, uh, do the marking on this and uh, turn uh, well turn the camera off do some marking here and uh, tape adjustments and then turn it back on all right